Hello everyone, I welcome you again to this online field structural geology course. We are in our second week and we are going to start lecture number 7. In lecture number 7 and also we will continue this topic to lecture number 8 and the topic of these two lectures would be secondary structures. And in these secondary structures what we have tried to do? we looked at different secondary features, secondary structures in and around Ghatshila. We interpreted them and we will show them one after another different structures. So, we will start with how to identify foliation planes. We have learned how to identify bedding planes in the previous lecture, but in this lecture we will learn how to identify foliations or secondary planes and then we will go after to see that how these secondary and primary planes do interact with each other. In order to do so, we will first talk about cleavage refractions in different parts of this region or a particular exposure and then we will talk about their intersections in a different way on their respective planes. So, we will see what we call them in structural geology or term them in structural geology as intersection lineations. Then we will go to identify different mineral lineations, but before that we probably would look at crenulation cleavages and crenulation lineations. After that we will talk about pressure shadow, we will talk about different types of interactions between uh, bedding planes or S0 together with S1, S2, S3 and so on. So, we are slowly moving to interpret the overprinting relationships. So, all these things we will learn in this lecture. Let us start. This place is called Ferry Ghat in Ghatshila. It is about 3 kilometers away from Ghatsila station. If you walk or take a car, you will arrive here if you drive towards the south and you see it is the bank of a river. The river is known as Shuborno Rekha and this place exposes a beautiful rock, mica cyst and uh, in this mica cyst, we will see in successive stages in different sections of this uh, lecture series a lot of structural features. So, overall this area here, here and in this side, it exposes the primary bedding plane that is S0. It also exposes the first foliation that is S1. S0 here contains lot of thin sedimentary deformational features and they are also deformed with multiple generations of foldings and other deformations. On the top of that we will see that over S1 we have crenulation cleavages, we have mineral lineations, pressure shadow lineations and all these are oriented differently and they have tectonic significance for this particular area. Also, the overall Ghatshila region and deformation of the Shingham Craton. On the top of that, we have one dike, a dolerite dike running through this place or cutting across the S0, S1 and all other features that we see here. So, that is a very late stage phenomena here. We will also examine this, this exposes particularly a number of uh, conjugate sets of fractures. Some shear surfaces, slicken lines, slicken sides and very interestingly at the contact zone of this dike and this country rock mica cyst, it displays 
a beautiful contact metamorphism marked by a baked zone. This place also is helpful to understand the general structural geology in the sense of understanding very basics of overprinting relationships. The penny contemporaneous structures that we see statistically if we consider that these were all spherical or uniform in shape, then they are also helpful in measuring the overall deformation because they act as an excellent strain marker. Generally the students they come here for uh, their own field work, they spend at least one to two days here to learn different things. They take a lot of measurements and data, we will be doing so as well for you. And uh, this is a place to learn structural geology from the very basic point of view. So what we see here, as we have understood how to identify the bedding planes or primary foliations and as I said that a compositional layering or color banding is very important, particularly if you are dealing with a low grade rock and in this case this type of formation is yes because this is metamorphosed under green cyst facies. So what we see here, this alternating lighter and darker bands. This is quite thick dark band and then we have again one lighter band and so on. So this is darker band and this is alternating lighter and darker bands. Now this define sedimentary or primary foliation. However, in this volume of rock or in this outcrop, we can see that there is another plane which is being defined in a different way or a series of planes that appeared here in a different way relative to the primary layering which is oriented in this manner. And this other orientation as you can imagine is like this, let me have a different color. As you can see that there, these planes are appearing like some sort of fractures or so on, on the surface, but they are very much aligned and I tell you these are very much penetrative or in a way they are appearing like some sort of mechanical damage in the rock. And these are secondary foliations. So you have primary foliations, the red ones and the blue ones are secondary foliations. So we just learnt to distinguish at least in this exposure uh, what is foliation or cleavage and we also learnt identifying that what is a bedding plane and how do you get them or how do you understand and differentiate them in the field, at least in this exposure. So now we are going to see a very special case of the interaction between foliation and bedding plane or in other words bedding plane as we have assigned as S0 and foliation as we have assigned it as S1. Now to see this place, so I just tell you that north is in this side. Okay, uh, that is always important that whenever you are you're trying to study something, you know that where you are, what is your orientation. Now we have seen that this is the general trend of the foliation or the trace of the foliation that we are seeing on this exposed surface. At the same time, we have seen from the long shot that this is a trace of a bedding plane. Interestingly, this bedding plane has a different lithology than the material here. As you can see from the color, this is little whitish and uh, you also can see that this is 
slightly has slightly higher grain size whereas this one has little more mica so entire rock is mica schist but here the concentration of mica is much higher compared to this as a result because we have different compositional variation so these two are more or less similar and this one is sand rich strength wise or competency wise this has higher strength compared to these two so see what does foliation do when it cuts across these three layers so if we try to follow the trace of the foliations on the mica cyst side on this side of this so we see clearly that the trend is like this and it is very similar in this side so if we keep it like that here somewhere and this and these these two are parallel but when we place it in this quartz rich layer we see it is like that and it is very clear that this is not being followed this trend is not being followed in this sand rich or quartz rich layer but it is once it is out of this sand rich layer then it is following the same trend and this is what is known as cleavage diffraction and that you see because of the competence contrast between two different lithologies of different strength which is the case here here the sand rich layer or quartz rich layer has higher strength compared to this mica cyst to understand this competence contrast and at the same time why the foliation here is at low angle or it is cutting this bedding interface at low angle and then when it is entering it is making a high angle it's very easy to understand because it has a relation with the general strain distribution or strain partitioning between the two different layers of two compositions and therefore two different strengths so if i try to sketch this as it is here in a different scale i am not following the same scale so imagine this is the boundary here you have mica cyst then sandstone and again mica cyst okay now imagine also that this is undergoing a shear deformation just for an example that may not be the case here and we can draw a marker circle covering these three layers now we know that if it is being sheared in this form then if this entire material was isotropic that means there was no competence contrast after some degree of shearing the strain ellipse should be like this but because this is mica cyst this layer and this layer it would deform more compared to that of the sandstone layer which is sandwiched between these two so as a result if this would deform like that then this would probably deform in a similar way however the middle one would deform less and therefore the long axis here would be like this and here would be like this and here it is like that and that clearly tells you that why this is like this at least in this case that we have just observed if we'd like to go further we know that in two dimension of strain ellipse so if i have a strain ellipse like this we know that this is the stretching direction therefore this is x and this is 
z okay the vertical direction if we consider strain ellipsoid that would be y so this direction is x and that is your maximum stretching direction and this is y so we know that foliations always do form along x y plane so this is also the trace of the x y plane on this surface. This is a very simple way you can understand that why cleavage diffraction do happen in nature and how to understand it or how to see it in the field. So now you understood why we see cleavage diffractions in nature. But this cleavage diffraction, if you can measure here in some places, we can measure it and I will show you later. If you can measure the orientation of the foliation planes here in the mica cyst, here in the sandstone and here again in the mica cyst and you plot them in the stereo net. The intersection between these two planes would give you a line and this line will give you a very important deformation feature or deformation parameter of this region. I am not going to tell you what it is. You think of yourself, recall your fold lecture and try to imagine or try to visualize that you have a foliation going on then it got refracted in the sand rich layer and what is the intersection line between these two cleavage refractions? What material parameter or what orientation is it going to give you? So I think you try it by yourself and we will learn more on it and if you cannot figure it out just send me back a message or contact the TAs. So in the field if you see cleavage refraction the way we saw, you can find it in many other places, it is okay. But if you do not see cleavage refraction, but you at the same time you see all possibilities of having cleavage refraction, that means you are getting layers of different competence contrast, but still you do not see cleavage refraction, then there could be two possibilities. One, you are at the hinge zone and to look at it, you make sure that the, the foliation from the weaker layer is intersecting the bedding plane at a right angle and also going into the competent layer at a right angle and leaving the competent layer also at a right angle. If that happens, that tells you that yes, you are at the hinge zone and even if there is a competence contrast, you should not expect a cleavage refraction and I show you how does it happen. So not in this area particularly, but you can think of a fold. Where this is say a competent layer for this case sandstone and this is mica cyst. As we have seen, if we are at the limb side, the axial planar foliation should be like that in very general case. But because we have competence contrast, the trace of the foliation would go like that. And this is what exactly we have observed in the previous area and this is we understood as cleavage refraction. But at the hinge, there is no refraction, it goes straight. So at hinge region, there should not be any cleavage refraction. Another possibility which is very less, but you still can expect that you may think that there is enough competence contrast. The cleavage is 
intersecting the bedding interface at low angle, but still you don't see cleavage refraction. That may tell you that these two different lithologies may not have the enough competence contrast while the cleavage was developing in the rock system. So, we learned the different aspect of cleavage refraction in this segment. So, we have just learned uh, cleavage refraction and this is a place where we will see the manifestation of cleavage refraction. You see that there are number of compositional variations of the traces of the bedding planes. One goes like this, another is like that. You can also see with the color variations and so on. Now, because of cleavage refraction, you may are looking at that these traces of the foliations S1 are little wavy. What I wanted to show you that you see that it appears like things are very gently folded, but I tell you these are not folds. These are essentially products of cleavage refraction. So, if you measure the strike and dip of this cleavage planes, you may get some variations across the traces of the beddings and they may intersect in the stereo net at some points and these points will give you as I have asked you the questions in the previous session that they will also give you the fold axis of this region. In a folded sequence, there are two mechanically important planes. One that is your primary, which is essentially the bedding plane. And second one that is a secondary plane that is foliation plane. Now, these two planes make a very important system and also their interaction tell us a lot of unique features that we generally derive from the field. For example, if I draw a simple fold, like this. So, this is the form surface extrados and this is intrados inside the fold. The actual planar cleavage assuming there is no competent contrast and cleavage refraction would come like that. So, if I take this plane, this foliation plane, let me mark the plane with a different color, the single layer folding that is happening. And if I cut a slice from here, along this and remove this section, then this is the same plane and in other dimension it go like this. So, clearly on this foliation plane, you should have the trace of the bedding. I am drawing it as a straight assuming that the fold is cylindrical. So, 
So if in the field, if you find a foliation plane and you have identified somewhere a bedding plane, then you must look for if this foliation plane is showing or containing the trace of the bedding plane on the foliation plane. And if you see this, this gives you one of the very important lineation that structural geologists do use frequently to determine the fold axis. And this is known as intersection lineation and in this case this is trace of bedding plane on axial planar cleavage. Now we will see this in the rock. What we described on the piece of paper, now here we see this is the trace of the foliation as you can see here, all these are the traces of the foliation and this is the trace of the bedding plane, this. And suddenly we find a plane here that is actually the foliation plane. Now in this plane, as we have said, that we can expect the trace of the bedding. And what we see that this is the trace of the bedding and other traces which are coming from this side which are not visible on this surface because of extreme foliation and also because of weathering. On the foliation plane we see the trace of bedding are present. I am not marking it but you can probably see number of linear features are present here. Now, one thing that is very typical for this exposure is you may have also seen or recognize a line along this. I tell you to ignore this because this is water mark. This is a little depression. So in rainy time you have water level little bit and this is marking the water table here. But that is not what you need to see right now. So you see the lines here. Now you of course can ask the question that why do I say this that these are traces of bedding, why not something else. And again here we have to use the criteria for identifying the bedding plants. And what we see here that there are some compositional variations, thickness variations and at the same time some color variations as well which we do not see on the foliation planes to distinguish the foliation planes or in other words these lines at least appearing to me pretty organic whether these lines or these traces on this random surface is mechanical. So as I said this is the foliation plane and you get some lines here which we identify as we have just learned from theory that these are intersection lineations or in other words these are traces of bedding planes on the foliation surface. So if you measure the orientation of these lines that means if you can measure the trend of this line and then the plunge that will give you the fold axis of this region. So identifying intersection lineation that is trace of the bedding plane on the foliation surface is important and if you can identify them and then if you can take their measurement the standard measurement of a lineation that is trend and plunge these data actually give you the orientation of the fold axis of this region.